right, coming up on Friday is another monthly epic lunch. This time it's at Capona's Dugout at noon on Friday. There is a sign-up sheet out there at the welcome desks. So uh, come have lunch with some of your friends and bring someone new to meet your friends and have lunch together. And then um, coming up in April, we have the Ray's Senior Prom Afternoon. So I don't know if you wear prom dresses and corsages or not, but it's air conditioned in there, so you probably could. Um, April 13th, 1.10 p.m. This is such a deal, 200 level seats and a free tote bag, $20 per ticket. So we must, Mary must have your payment by May 22nd to order the tickets, oh, March, yeah, sorry. Uh, Mary must have your payment by March 22nd to uh, order the tickets, so sign, you can sign up out there and get her your money for the Ray's Senior Prom. Sounds like a lot of fun. All right, we are going to give thanks this morning as we sing our hymns, and our first one is number 139, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, all but verse 3. Shall we stand? Thank you. Good to have you in worship with us today, those who are here worshiping with us in the sanctuary, as well as those who are watching online. Um, and if you're, some of you are watching online because um, you can't quite make it this morning because of time change, some of you will be watching this in an hour. Uh, wherever you are worshiping and whenever you're worshiping with us, we're glad that you have joined us for this time of worship and hope that it will be uh, a meaningful time of worship where you feel um, where you feel loved and inspired and challenged in, in all the best ways. Uh, so before I have my prayer this morning, there is an announcement that uh, 
needs to be made. Hey, Pam! Yes, Patty? What's happening here at the church on Saturday? Hmm, let me think. Saturday? Oh, yes, Saturday. I know what's happening on Saturday. It's our St. Patty's Day party. And you know what? It's the first one we've had in about four or five years, so we're very excited about this. And it's really special because we've invited another church to join us. For those of you who know Mount Zion, United Methodist Church in Clearwater, and some of their people, they're coming, and they're very excited about it. And we are hosting it, so they are our guests, and I know you're going to make them feel extremely welcome. Uh, we started a friendship with them during COVID, during a book club that we had with them online, and that was initiated by Pastor Matt and their pastor. And so we're very excited to extend that friendship and that relationship and build it for the future. So... On Saturday, we are having, and you need to expect, great food, great fun, and great fellowship, fellowship. with games. Games and prizes. And prizes and special music. So who wouldn't want to come, right? And so what do you have to do, Patty? Well, there are sign-out sheets on the welcome desk, if you'll sign up there. If you somehow decide can't decide whether you can come today or not, come on Saturday anyway. We'll put mm -hmm. you in. Don't, there's always room for one more. And you can always call the church office, right, during the week. Yes, you yeah. can. If you decide, you know, your plans change and you can come, we just want to make sure we have enough tables for everybody. But we think it's going to be a great uh, experience, and plus it's the first of other events that we plan with them throughout this year. So we need to put our faith in action, and we'll see you on Saturday. Absolutely. Thanks to our resident leprechauns for that announcement. Um, and, and I do hope that you'll be there on Saturday. Um, that is uh, going to be a great time of fellowship together. We've got more on the calendar coming up to, that we're going to have together with them. Some will be here at our, uh, at our church and some will be at Mount Zion. Um, and uh, that's just something that I'm hoping will, will be the beginning of a, a beautiful and strong and deep relationship. Uh, today, today I'm going to share with you uh, St. Patrick's Breastplate is what this is called. It's a, a prayer attributed to St. Patrick, uh, given that Friday is St. Patrick's Day, and we're having our party on Saturday. So um, would you join me, as, and I hope you'll make this prayer your own. Let us pray. I rise today through the strength of heaven, light of the sun, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, Swiftness of the wind, depth of the sea, stability of the earth, firmness of the rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's hosts to save me afar and near, alone or in a multitude. Christ, shield me today against wounding. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ in the ear that hears me. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of creation. And now let us pray as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. are going to come and receive our offering for this morning, would you join me in prayer? O Lord, God of hosts, we do give you thanks for your faithfulness to us, your generosity towards us, your love and your grace that overflows in our lives. Every good gift comes from you. It is in you that we live, move, and have our being. And so, God, we bring these gifts with hearts filled with gratitude and joy for all that you are to us and all that you have done for us, and also in recognition that everything we have is yours. And so, God, use this for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our next hymn. Sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I surprised them. Because I wanted to say a bit about this hymn before we sing it. It continues in our service of giving thanks, and it is a Native American melody. So it completely changes. You have to forget everything you know about Western music, and you have to think about being outside. You have to think about a place where time doesn't really exist. Um, if you have your hymnal open to 148, you'll see in the bottom right corner, the tune name is La Quiparo, which is the French translation of the Dakota Lake That Speaks. And there, a, Joseph, an, a gentleman named Joseph Renville was putting together the very first translation of the Dakota language in Minnesota, in, Lake, in, in La Quiparo, uh, Minnesota. So... We are going to sing this very quietly. Uh, Carl will play the whole thing through once so that you hear the melody, and we will sing both verses in a very quiet, timeless type of song. scripture reading for today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And for, from Philippians chapter 4 
verses 11 through 13. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord our God, we give you thanks for the beauty of music, for the opportunity to gather, to share our gifts with one another and our fellowship with each other. And now for this opportunity to pause and consider your word and what it says to us and how we might allow it to have its way in our lives. And so it is, O oh God, that we ask you through the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit that you would speak to us your words of life and truth. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Um, <clears throat> I, did, I did notice earlier that, uh, that, that Bradley started to um, refer to Carl as Tom. And he went, Tom, I mean, Carl. And it made me think of my, my youngest son. I have three boys and a girl. And the youngest son, Caleb, uh, for a long time, thought that his name was Ja Caleb because his older two siblings are Jay and Aaron. And, you know, you'd go through, Ja, eh, Caleb. So we're glad that Carl is with us, and he cer certainly is a, a blessing to us. Um, so we continue today with our series of the five marks of a Methodist, which could also be, uh, we could also call it the five marks of a follower of Jesus, because uh, that's the way that John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, thought of what a Methodist was, is a Methodist was simply a follower of Jesus, who was very intentional in how they followed Jesus. Uh, so we've already looked at uh, a Methodist um, <clears throat> loves God, a Methodist rejoices in God, and today we're going to take a look at a Methodist gives thanks. Now the marks that we've been looking at might sound simple, but they're certainly not easy. You know, there's some factors of how the marks get lived out that are simply impossible for us to do on our own. None of the marks are achievable apart from the grace that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us and working through us. We don't have within us the ability to grunt it through or push with our own effort through these things. It is God's work in us as we yield to the Spirit working in us, as we surrender our lives to God. And we've got to make this clear at the beginning because the main scripture that Wesley uses to describe this mark of, uh, of giving thanks is, is uh, that text that was just read from 1 Thessalonians 5. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus, Christ Jesus. I've been, a, I've been a Christian for over 35 years, and I still find that the scripture sounds extreme when I read it. How in the world are we supposed to give thanks in every circumstance when some circumstances seem to come from the pits of hell? I mean, there's no way to avoid this kind of response in our life of discipleship. There are things we will we'll face it sooner or later. There are things that we will face that are hard and difficult, that are dark and ugly. I, I don't know where, as Christians, we've, we've gathered this notion that seems to permeate Western Christianity that, that, you know, if we have faith in Christ, if we follow Jesus and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then, and we have enough faith, then that's a, a get out of trial and tribulation free card. This isn't monopoly. It doesn't work that way. Jesus said that you can expect trials. In fact, you see, see there, there there's, no, there's no exception to that. He said, expect trials. We will all face them at some point. And so he says, I'm not saying, and he says in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, I'm not saying this because I'm in need or I've learned to be content, for I have learned to be content in 
whatever circumstances. I know, that, that it, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. See, gratitude is the Christian's response to God's grace. Thanks is always our first response when we recognize that God is with us, that God has never forsaken us, and that God has helped us. Gratitude is not based on present circumstances, but on God's faithfulness to us in the past, God's presence with us now, and God's promise for the future. Gratitude is grounded in the nature of God, who is love, not in circumstances that are taking place at any given time in our lives. We may never know why things happen as they do, but we do know that God isn't the, off, the author of evil. The bad things that happen in our lives are simply life that happens. It's not that God is letting you go through that circumstance or that somehow God has caused that trial or tribulation in your life to make you stronger or to refine you or to do something greater within you. And, and that just, it aggravates me when I hear that. Be why? Because when you boil that backward, when you dial that backwards and you boil that down far enough, what that does is it makes God the author of evil. And that's just not the God that I serve. You see, life comes at us. And bad things happen to us. But God does not cause those things to happen. You see, no matter what happens in our lives or in the world, we can always know that God isn't taking any delight in the bad things that happen to us or to anyone else. You see, what God does promise is that there are great possibilities that, that God will be able to take whatever that negative thing that is happening in our lives and bend it for good. You see, when I look back on things in my own life, I can tell you, God's not the one who gave me a brain tumor that, that had to be removed and then grew back again and had to be removed five years later. God didn't create that. That's not something God let me go through. But what I know is that God was with me throughout that whole ordeal. And, and, and God has been able to bend that to good things. How? Well, as I went through that, people witnessed my struggling with it, and I did the first time around. I struggled with it significantly because I was, when the first, the first one came around, I was 33 years old with four young children at home, and I had left my life as I knew it and entered into this wild adventure that is pastoral ministry. And, and I had this notion embedded in within me that, you know, hey, I've been faithful to God. I've done what God has called me to do. I've gone where God has asked me to go. So that means everything's going to be peachy and bright, right? This, this, this particular experience disabused me of that notion. But what also people saw is the faith that emerged from that. We had, we had this uh, beautiful... Um, kind and faithful woman that was a part of that church she was an older woman she was our, she was our church accompanist sweetest disposition you've ever met and throughout this whole or, ordeal when the diagnosis first came they didn't know whether or not it would be removed and we didn't know if it was cancerous or not but throughout that whole time um after the after the di the initial diagnosis she she would tell me she was praying for me and she just knew that God would, would heal me. And I, I said, thank you. Appreciate that. And then when, when the word got, you know, came out, I was going to have to have it surgically removed. I, I came to church, that sun, you know, in church that Sunday after the service was over with where there, that was announced. Uh, at the end of the service, she was crying. She said, Pastor, I just knew God was going to heal you. Maybe I just didn't have enough faith. And I said, sweetheart, no. 
God will heal. God coming, God touching us with God's finger is a rare exception. But God can heal me through medicine. And the ultimate healing is when I move from this life into the next. So yes, God will heal me. And, and this surgery isn't happening because you don't have enough faith. God didn't cause this. And she was able to see that. She was able to, to, to witness that. Others were able to see that. Now, as I was going through that, that was not easy. Those were very difficult times. Um, when you're going through a significant diagnosis like that, uh, a lot of people feel like they need to do something. And so they, they come up to you and they offer you these, these platitudes. Um, you can pick your poison. I mean, there's a ton of them out there. Having a faith, God's going to heal you. One of my seminary classmates uh, that I didn't know all that well came up to me once. She was a relatively new student. Came up to me and said, you know, if you, if you get up every morning and you say, you pray, I'm, pray, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Five times, I'm healed in Jesus' name, 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 I'm healed in Jesus' name. God's going to take this away from you, and you're going to be healed. And I nodded, and I said, thank you. And I turned away, and my best buddy that was right there with me said, you know, I'm proud of you. I said, for what? He said, you didn't punch her in the face. I said, well, I wanted to. But I didn't feel like that would be constructive. Yet there, there are times when we're going through, t through tough things. that you know, I, I wanted to throat punch a few people when they came to me with those platitudes. Because it was really about, it became apparent to me, it was really about them needing to feel better about themselves. That they had done something than it was really helping me in some significant way. Also what it helped me to do is it helped me to be, better, to be a better pastor and a better uh, to offer better pastoral care to people. And how is that? Because I've been through this stuff. When I speak about these trials and tribulations, I'm speaking from whatever lived experience I've, owned, I've had. So when I'm able to go in where someone's had a negative diagnosis, I can go in and be a safe space and not be one that is so quick to offer these empty platitudes. I don't have the need to feel better about myself. I can be a safe space where a person can say, can say to me what they need to say. You're like, hey, I'm really pissed off at God right now. So I can understand that. I've been there. God's still with you, even when you're angry. God can handle it. And I'm here. Whenever you need to vent, if you need to slap somebody, I'll give you my cheek. Just don't hit it too hard. Got to preserve this lovely face, you know. See, no matter what happens in our lives, in our world, we know that God's not taking any delight. But God is able to bend those things eventually to good. And see, we have to remember that. Because unless we spend time on the spiritual practice of gratitude, we'll never find this third mark of discipleship within us. Gratitude is the Christian's response to God's grace. You know, everybody... Every one of us has something in our lives to be grateful for. Even in the darkest of dark places, the lowest of lows, there's something in your life to be grateful for. I had a, a, parishioner, a parishioner at a different church uh, in Central Florida when I was serving there that um, every Sunday when I would greet him, he would... He had the same response, and it was always a genuine response with a big smile, uh, both on his face and in his voice. I'd say, how you doing? And he'd look at me and he goes, I'm upright and able to take nourishment. And I could tell he truly was grateful that he woke up that morning, that he had breath that filled his lungs. You know, we, we have something that we can be thankful for. Sometimes we have to search for it, but it's there. Author and pastor Charles Allen once said, the number one problem I have had to deal with is the mistaken notion that so many people have that God is mad at them. 
See, as long as we see ourselves in the presence of an angry God, God can never become a meaningful part of our lives. It just can never happen. As long as we think that God is angry with us, we'll hold God at arm's length. Why would we want an angry God to come close to us? That is terrifying. If, if God is om, omnipotent, then why would we want God close if God is angry at us for our sinfulness? And yet that is, that is the God that, that I heard preached as I was growing up. You see, as long as we think God is angry with us, we'll go into hiding just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, hiding whenever God comes near. See, the, the reason we do that is because we've not learned that we are perfectly loved by God. We accept that we're perfectly known by God, I think, on, on most levels. But we don't quite understand that we are perfectly loved by God. And, and that's important, because if we only understand that we're perfectly known by God and we don't quite grasp that we're perfectly loved, this is what happens. We cower in fear and we want to hide from God. But when we accept that we are both perfectly known and perfectly loved, then we can rest in his embrace, knowing that God loves us, even us. And, and there's no amount of bad that can happen in our lives that, that will that will cause God to love us less. No, no amount of bad, whether, whether it's self-created bad or bad that happens, that comes to us. It doesn't matter. None of it changes how much God loves us. And the flip side of that coin is also true. You, you, there's, there's no amount of good that you can do that will make God love you any more than God loves you right now. God loves you because there's something lovable about you. You are created with God's image inside of you, as is every human being. And you are the object of God's love. You see, we need to remember that, that when Adam and Eve went into hiding, God, call, God sought them out, called them to come out of hiding, and provided them garments to cover the shame of their sin. God's still in the midst of that moment. God didn't destroy them. God wasn't so much, you know, super angry at them as he still loved them and he called them out and he cared for them. He provided for them still. That's what God does. That's what love does is the basis of thanksgiving. And as disciples, we give thanks not for what's happening to us, but for the fact that nothing can happen to us apart from the presence of God with us. Nothing. Nothing. God is with us always. There's a, there, in, it, when you think about the, the Old Testament story of the Exodus, it, 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 as it begins, you, you, uh, they frame the story by saying that the, the people of God were enslaved in Egypt and, and the, the slavery had become extremely oppressive and they were suffering greatly. And, and so they cried out to God for deliverance. And what that text says is essentially not just that God heard them. That's how it's translated to us in English. But that God entered into, in some way, their suffering and suffered with them. And that, from that, God called Moses to deliver them from their oppression. You see, God is with us and God's within us. Nothing happens apart from God's presence within us. Gratitude is the Christian's response to God's grace. This is what Paul meant when he said nothing can separate us from God's love for us in Jesus Christ in Romans 8.38. Thanksgiving is a way of leading us out of anxiety. Because God is good, we can cast all our anxieties on God. And, and gratitude is, is an important practice. It's interesting how modern, modern psychology feels like they've discovered something new. Uh, but it's there in the scriptures that specifically recounting things that we are grateful for on a daily basis. 
can have a significant increase in our mental and emotional well-being because it gives us perspective that yes there are bad things happening but still there are things in my life that I can be grateful for and as Christians we can be grateful to know that God is with us that is the that is uh, the one thing that we know is constant and certain in our lives that God is with us that we are loved by God even when we can't sense God's presence or feel God's love it remains constant it is there because God is good, we can cast all of our anxieties on God. We don't have to figure out why something's happening to us. God cares. God knows. God gives grace. Gratitude is the evidence that we're staying in love with God. And John Wesley connects Thanksgiving to the next mark of a disciple that we'll look at in depth next Sunday, and that is prayer. We could pray about any and everything. Because we know that we're taking our, our petitions and concerns to the one who loves us. And we realize with great joy that no matter how small or large, no matter whether it's day or night, no matter whether we understand what's happening or, or not, whether, whether it's, it's, a, it's a good, faith-filled prayer or if it's an ugly, visceral prayer, take it to the Lord in prayer. We can take it all. God can handle all of it. So when I was praying, God... You know, I was angry. God, why in the world did you do this to me? Because that's what I thought God did it to me. Why did you do this to me? And I was angry and I was shaking my fist at God. God still loved me and God embraced me and God was patient with me and walked with me through all of it. When, when I prayed to God, I said, God, help me not to throat punch the next person who gives me one of these platitudes. That was okay. God could handle that. You see in the Psalms, there's some pretty raw emotions that come out in prayer. God can handle it. The important thing is to come to God, to bring it to Jesus, to bring it to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And we'll talk a lot about that next week. Gratitude is the comprehensive response that we make to life because gratitude is the Christian's response to God's grace and all of our lives are lived in God's grace. In 2 Corinthians 9, 14 and 15, it says, because of God's grace, it says of God's grace, because of the surpassing grace God has given to you, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. You see, when, when the Apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it wasn't, it wasn't a tagline to go on a a t-shirt or a tattoo or anything else. It was a reminder that the only way Paul was able to endure everything that he endured is because Christ was in him, giving him the strength. Did Paul always feel strong? I'm certain he didn't. Nor will you and I always feel like we can conquer the world. But we can know that even on those days when we want to crawl under a rock, that God still is with us. See, this third mark of a disciple is more than positive thinking or simply having a pleasant disposition. It is the deep response to grace that produces the outlook on life that brings us to each day grateful for having had the privilege of living on this earth, of having breath that fills our lungs of waking up and opening our eyes and experiencing yet another day. A disciple gives thanks because gratitude is the Christian's response to God's grace. It is not based on our circumstances. Gratitude is based on God who is love, who has promised to be with us and to be faithful. So no matter what you're going through right now, whether you're going through really tough stuff and it seems really dark and dreary and hopeless, God's with you. God loves you. Even though you might not feel it, it doesn't change it. God is there. And I pray and hope 
that even in the midst of the darkness you might be going through, that you, that you can latch on to something to be grateful for. To be grateful for God's love, for God's grace, for God's faithfulness, and for God's presence with you. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give you thanks that you have loved us so well and faithfully. We give you thanks that it is this love that sustains us. It is this love that gives us our identity. And it is from this love that we can make it through anything in this life. And so, Lord, when the way seems hard, when it's dark, and we are in the valley of the shadow of death, remind us that you are with us, and we do not have to fear. For it is a valley that we will come through. There is an end to it. It's not a cave. It's a valley. And so, Lord, help us to see the light the light of your love, of your grace, and your faithfulness to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Shall we stand and sing number 102?
now as you go from this place, go forth with the knowledge and the assurance that God is with you, that God loves you, and that God never will leave you or forsake you. Now go forth in the power of that love to share that love with all you meet. Amen.